Come Holy Spirit, come fill my heart, refresh my soul. This is your season of grace come with your host, Spirit, Patrick Henry Eden. Get ready for Grace Revolution. Isaiah chapter 40 verses 25 26. Isaiah chapter 40. To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal? Says the Holy One. To whom will you compare me? Whatever is standing in your life to contend with God, to take the place of God, seeking to be compared to God. By the word of God, this question, as I ask that question, let that thing be broken into two. The scripture talks about the ark of God being taken to the temple of Dagon. And God asked that question, who can be compared to me? Because when they took the ark of God to the temple of Dagon, they were trying to compare the living God to Dagon. And God asked the question in the night, by morning, Dagon had been broken. As I ask this question by God and by his word tonight, by morning, every dagon that had been contending for the place of God in your life shall be broken in the name of Jesus. Be seated. God asks this question in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 25. To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal? Says the Holy One. The lift of your eyes and look to the heavens who created all this he who brings out the starry hosts one by one and calls them each by name so God says I am the one who brings out the starry hosts one by one so all the stars I call them each by name And all because of his great power and mighty strength, no one of them is missing. So he keeps the stars in place. That means the God who knows the stars, who made the stars, who knows them each by name, and that's not all. Who keeps them in their places? Who can you compare that God to? What is the situation? What is the condition? What is the circumstance you are facing? right now that you can compare that God to if, you, if there is any situation if there is anybody, if there is any reality if there is any vision any dream, if there is anything at all you experience that you can compare to that God please let me see your hand God himself says there is no one like me if you doubt it, it's your problem which means the problem is not God, no one like God, no sickness like God, no demon, no devil, no witch, no wizard, no marine, no ancestral. There is nothing like God. It's like secret cults. You have different secret cults, they can be as many. What they are, why, why do they fight? They fight for supremacy. To see who is greater. So they struggle. Today they will kill this one. And the other one they will kill another one. They are trying to be greater. That means they are comparing themselves. So God is not come, he's not in a, in a club of gods. Trying to compare himself. God has made it very clear. Who is like me? Is a clear thing. That means I am not in any class. I am my class. I am my equal. 
I am compared only to me and to no one else. Shout hallelujah. So no one is as great as our God. No one is comparable. God has made it clear. I made the stars. I just want to share with you something today that is a foundation for us in these days of spiritual warfare. And these days, I expect things, everything that sits in an altar and expects to be worshipped. And I want to really warn you and beg you, if as a boss in the office you are sitting down here and you are playing a God unto another person, say, let me see how you will go. Let me see how you will be promoted. Let me see. If you are doing that before you pray tonight, just repent first of all. Oh, tell God, I am not God. Oh, I am not like you. Did you hear me? Certain people will be ready for burial. Be no, I'm not praying for anybody to die. But whoever says I am like God, God does not tolerate that. So if God doesn't tolerate it, then we should prepare for burial. Because these days we are revealing God. We are talking God. We are revealing God at the highest level. When we say who is like God, it is the provocation of divinity. We are asking God to introduce himself. God has left us with testimonies in, in, the, in the scripture and even in our own testimonies. Evidences that when people challenge God, they, be, they get buried. Or like Nebuchadnezzar, they remain human, but they live like animals. Until the day they can open their mouth and say, no one is like you. I, I speak like a prophet because God has sent me to reveal him to your life. See, anyone in your life like Nebuchadnezzar that exalts the self, sitting in the place of God, demanding that as you finish worshipping God, you should come back and also bow and worship them. Otherwise, you will not rise. Ah, okay, whether they are witches or wizards, whether it is witchcraft, whatever it is, if they are like God, let them survive for another day. If they are not like the God I preach, then we get ready to settle them. And every issue concerning anything that sits in the place that God should sit in your life, it is settled now in the name of Jesus. Whether it is sickness, whoever afflicted somebody with strange disease, they say, Let me see inside now for people. Oh. And here you are, sir. God has made it very clear. I'm not the one who told God to say it. He said, I have checked it out. No one is like me. So, who can you compare me? So, anything that seeks to be compared, that one will be buried. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to talk about the need to repair the altar. Tell somebody, repair the altar. Tell three people, repair the altar first. I want to introduce the first kings, the first book of kings. Elijah rose in Israel. Elijah has no introduction like his father, like his mother, like the time he was born. Who under whom did he serve as a prophet? The scripture says, just introduces him as a Tishbite. He just rose and started his prophetic mission. And God raised him for a particular purpose to settle the issue of Baal. In Israel, say Baal. I looked up for the name Baal. The word Baal, the meaning of it is Lord. The honor, Lord, the honor, perhaps the ruler. So Baal was seen as the Lord. The one who had ownership. Ownership of wealth. Such that to be wealthy, you have to bow to bar. To have fruitfulness, you bow to bar. 
That's how Baal was seen. As the honor, as Lord. The one who claimed ownership of health. Ownership of protection. So Baal came into the kingdom. By the time of Jezebel, Baal had taken the place of God in Israel. God was no longer the main issue. The prophets of Baal, there were so many. 400 and something of them. They were many. Baalism was a big business. Lucrative. Attention had been taken from Yahweh, the true God, to the demonic influence. And the, the prophets of Baal were honored, respected. They were given royal protection presidential protection Jezebel was their commander in chief and she was in the palace as the queen and Ahab gave them presidential provision and coverage and so God became the service of God the worship of God the issues of God became something of second class you don't talk about it. When you say you worship the true God, you are in danger. And so God raised a prophet called Elijah. The Bible does not have time to introduce Elijah. The Bible goes straight to the mission of Elijah. In every generation, God raises prophets to address issues. Am I talking to somebody? So when we talk about a prophet, the problem we have because of small-mindedness and little knowledge and understanding in this part of the world in spiritual matters and because of the fetish background. So when we talk about prophet, all that people think of or understand is a man you go to who tells you things about you, which is in your family. Oh, that man you want to marry is not your husband. Or that other woman or this or that so a fortune teller so to say and because of that evil agents you know from this part of the world you know idiom idiom has been a major thing if you understand me say I understand in a quiet state of Kobusem, this part of the world idiom is part of the culture that is why there is so much deception in prophetic ministry in this part of the world. Why? Because the background already prepares an individual for that. When somebody is sick in a family, before treatments, they go to idiom. When somebody dies before burial, so when they say, let's contribute money for Idiom, if you don't give the money, you are the one who killed the person. It's already concluded. Idiom of Rema. So that's the foundation. So when you say you are a prophet in this part of the world, people already put you in a box of Idiom. That means, tell us, and then we give what they tell me. Tell us, and then we will be what they can me. Tell us who will kill me tomorrow. Tell us among the people who are serving with me who is a wish who will steal something from me. I have four girls to marry. Among these, who will prosper me? That's what Idiom did. And that's what Idiom is still doing today in places that are called prayer houses. And many powerful prophets may be operating at that level. That doesn't take away the fact that God gives people the spirit of revelation. That there are people in the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. That there is a gift of knowledge that can operate in that. But when that becomes a business, that people instead of seeking God to serve him, now you see church and prophets and prophecy as a way of looking out for things. Now it is reducing God from his majesty to a computer where you can google if you understand google let me see you 
Google means you want to find out who wants to keep, kill your father. You go to the application Google. Brak, 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 who killed my father? And Google will search. Kill your father. Brak, 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 who killed my mother? So that is the kind of God people know. But what I'm talking about here is Baalism was reigning in Israel. God raised Elijah. And I said, in every generation, God raises certain prophets to deal with certain issues. When they talk, they talk about that issue. When they cry, when they fight. So, the whole problem, the whole issue that Elijah was raised to tackle was to bring Israel back to God. Shout hallelujah. And to bring down the throne and the altar of Baal. Now, if you look at our generation, you will discover Baal is at work. Secret cult is Baal. You see, many preachers are afraid of talking about secret cult. You don't hear it on radio. In churches, from today, begin to take notes. If you go to church, if you listen to radio and television, begin to take notes. How many times people talk about cultism? But it is a reality. All our villages, all our cities, all our towns, our lower governments are being ravaged by the menace of cult. This is the greatest bar of our generation. Bar cultism has become currency. That if you are not a cultist in certain areas, if you want to aspire for political power, then get ready. In business, in multinationals, being employed. That's only one aspect of it. There are other areas where Baal is operating. Anything that seeks to take the place of God in the life of believers, in the church, that is Baal. Certain trends of ministry in our time that pays no attention to righteousness, to salvation, to holiness, that is bad. In our means, we cover up God, but we use the name of God for things we want. But His glory, don't worry about that. His standard, don't worry about that. That is bad. Anything that at the end of it, at the end of the ministry, the the word of God didn't enter your heart. Your life is not challenged for you to live a better life to reflect God as a Christian. You are involved in the worship of Baal. Whether that church has the most the most popular name or not, Elijah was raised, and he told Ahab, "Except by my words, the sky will not give rain." And God honored it. Because God wanted to show Israel and Baal that there's no one like me. Oh, shout, no one like God. So that time was a time of provocation because Baal had taken the heart of people. I am so sure in my heart that these days are days that God wants to prove himself mighty. A time when glory holiness righteousness are being compromised now what we try to do in church today in order to make members stable and comfortable we talk more about belief believe your sin has been forgiven believe you have you have been in you are a child of god believe healing is for you believe but what of repentance which means a whole lot of gospel we preach is not the gospel of jesus the gospel of bar gospel of satisfaction a gospel that doesn't want to challenge people so that people don't look for other options this is the time for god to show himself mighty at no time no other time this is a very special time in history what bar is holding you 
what bar is deceiving you he said we are there is a subtle manipulation of the gospel by preachers to make you feel you can believe they just believe by faith you are saved or by grace through faith you have been saved but just as a repent first before you do what you believe how can you believe and be saved if you have not repented there is no magic no way it's not the gospel of jesus no matter what you have been trying to believe no matter what you are believing now whatever no matter what you believe tomorrow if you don't repent that belief is useless put that scripture on the screen the time has come he said the kingdom of god is near number two repent and then do what believe okay so that is enough write it down mark chapter 1 verse 15 so that is it so elijah was to bring people back so at some time elijah came back from running and say enough of all this nonsense let us test if it is god that is god let us see if it is bar that is bar let us see shout hallelujah in other words elijah was trying to say practically who is like god let us see first king chapter 18 verse 25 elijah said to the prophets of bar choose one of the bulls and prepare it first since there are so many of you call on the name of your god but do not light the fire so they took the bull given them and prepared it then they called on the name of Baal from morning till noon oh Baal answer us they shouted but there was no response from today everything that is not God in your life that has been responding to lie to you has been responding to confuse you has been responding to make you sick has been responding to make you afraid from today as God silenced Baal on the day of encounter Baal could not speak from today whatever has been speaking darkness over you shall no longer speak in the name of Jesus if you ask me why I said because there is no one like God when I made that revelation God told me Baal was not worshipped for nothing in Israel Baal actually manifested itself in certain miracles so the prophets of Baal were shouting out of faith and out of experience knowing that in the time past Baal could do something on the day of God witchcraft is silent oh. <laughs> on the day of God marine is quiet on the day of God ancestral things cannot talk that is why we need the days of God we need the days of God we need to begin to walk in the days of God the reason why witchcraft is speaking everywhere people see in dreams as their blessings are taken and they wake up actually their blessings are taken and i am asking where is god the reason is because god is being given a place among bar the reason why so much darkness is prevailing church is everywhere preaching everywhere but young people are drooping into cult. Yes, these are not people are not making these days to be the days of God. Rather, the days of material gratification, the days of the stomach, the days of human arrogance, the days of power and pride of man. If it is the day of God, I challenge you to step tonight from the days of your carnal life into the days of God when God can be the Alpha and Omega 
when God can be the beginning and the end, when God can be your defense and your shield, when God can be your coverage and your foundation, that is what it means to be the days of God. Elijah was bringing God's glory back to Israel. And in the days of his glory, demons cannot speak. I don't care who takes my name to an altar. Useless prophecies that came as a resign. A lot of people trying to send you texts or trying to put it into your ear. People have taken your poster, taken out this to um, the strange altars. So this is it. I say, these did, 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 did people do they even know I serve the living God? Who told you I I need I need I need permission from witches or from wrong altars to, to serve God? Go punish every useless altar. I serve the God who spread out the stars and the galaxy and who identifies them each one by name he does is not confused between the Okon star and the Atom star every day every time he knows them all one by one by name and that's not all he sustains each one that's the God I serve and I worry about somebody who takes my photograph to an altar that altar is ready to die yeah. useless altar is it for nothing jesus died he died so that his blood can speak on my head yeah. that is the reason he died in my generation the blood of jesus will not be in vain it could not have been in vain that he shed his blood he could not have shed his blood and then a witch power, a witchcraft power, a useless demon will then be the one to control my life. Not in this generation. Not in the generation of my children. Until Christ comes, the revival of his glory must overtake the power of God in every church, in every congregation. God will be honored. A time is coming in my generation that those who don't preach God will lose congregation. I don't need to preach i don't need to pray for that to happen that's a call it is time to make our days the days of god because in the days of god no one is like god no one in the days of god no one is like god but when it is not the days of god god can permit things to deceive those who don't acknowledge him because he's not fighting for glory he reveals his glory to those who seek him if you don't seek him he hides his glory no matter how much you shout he does not answer you because he's not hungry for survival for relevance you know for us human we do certain things to prove relevant so we can answer let me see what you will do so you try to do something to prove God has no point to prove he's the creator the author the owner the beginning the end the sustainer the end everything including everything so when you don't know him and you shout his name he hides his glory he's ever relevant yes if you call him if he doesn't answer you he's still god it does not change if i stop preaching him he's still god if we stop meeting in this place god is still god he is not hungry for relevance that is why certain times people call him he does not answer because they are not worthy of his presence he said, those who seek me diligently will reveal myself shout the days of god that's all we need in our generation the days of God that will make cultism no longer attractive the days of God that will make prostitution no longer attractive the greatest desire I have concerning you and the prayer I pray for you every day is that as you seek God and believe in God that God will make you ten times better like in the time of Daniel ten times better than your colleagues ten times better than those who are above you now that is how god did it for daniel and that's how god wants to do it for those who place him above everything we are in a time that there's so much confusion 
what what are we talking about now we are no longer talking about holiness and goodness and the righteousness of god being seen in our life we are talking about whether it is right to pay tithe or not can you imagine nonsense how does that change the glory of god does it bother god whether you pay tithe or not when your life is in darkness god actually demands gifts from his children not those who don't know him so we cannot waste our time talking nonsense the gospel is too precious jesus christ could not have died so that we talk about tight paying nonsense he died so that life will be revealed in glory and the days of god will come into somebody's families and everything that speaks against god in families will die in these days of god i provoke the glory of god every witchcraft power every occultic power every foundation of evil in these days of god they shall not survive in the name of jesus in every child of god in this congregation that has been oppressed by those who try to be your god somebody who is seeking yahweh somebody who's serving god but is going through nonsense i bring judgment by the holiness and the righteousness of the god itself i bring judgment upon them if they are like god let them stand if they are not like god let them fall and never rise in the name of jesus whatever is ruling and conditioning and limiting the life of a child of god whom god sacrificed his only son to redeem whatever is blocking your path and asking you who is god i bring the judgment of god upon them and i say if they are like god yes let them stand but if they are not like god no they shall no longer stand i say they shall no longer stand i say they shall no longer stand my desire and the desire of god is that these days will be the days of god these days will be the days of god when the youngest in the family who knows god will be given a place of leadership because he's the child of god these days will be the days of god glory to god when your time becomes the time of god when your days become the days of god everything that says you will not succeed is under judgment everything that says you will not marry is under judgment everything that says you will not have children they are under judgment in the name of jesus these are the days of god and it is only for days like this that a human destiny was born can i tell you something you were not born for useless times you were not born for useless things you were born for the days of god when god will allow his glory to be revealed when god will allow his power to be seen where is the god of elijah elisha asks he said where is the god of elijah and god said i'm right here with you and the mantle divided the river the time is coming in this city a time is here in this city the glory of god will be number one a time is here in this city those who love God, they shall rule. I want to challenge a young man who stands here. I want to challenge a young woman who stands here. Live daily, setting up the days of God over your life. Because a day comes when God will look for you in the place of rejection and will bring you to rule over those who didn't like you. The scripture says you will rule in the midst of your foes. From today, because no one is like God, I hear a voice. God is telling me now. He's searching for somebody who can be lifted to show his glory. You see, why many believers struggle for promotion? Because they have not yet gotten the vision of God. They look for promotion for themselves and for their pride. God is looking for his days. Elijah saw fire from heaven because he recognized the days of God these dark days when prostitution is the current thing in, in, in business in education and everything God is looking for young people like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego who will allow their days to become the days of God 
in his days righteousness shall flourish peace will rule these are the days of God sickness is being healed these are the days of God oh I smell the glory of God in this place I don't know whether you see what I see you see what happened verse 30 of that scripture Elijah said to all the people come near come here to me they came to him and he repaired the altar of the Lord Elijah didn't start by shouting the name of God he didn't start by calling in Jesus name he called them and they came he did what he repaired the altar that had been broken you see why we gather in numbers and we shout and lose our voices and nothing happened because the husband is not interested in repairing the altar of marriage and righteousness a wife is not interested in repairing a young man is not interested in repairing relationship with God a young woman first of all wants to sleep with a man and have fun and then think of marriage later if I don't sleep with him now he will not marry me a young man first of all wants to marry a wife unofficially and then marry officially when he's tired and because of that poverty is given license to keep him low yes that is how it works if you didn't know that's how it works that's why so many people who are engaged they are engaged for seven years they touch their hands into things because marriage has to have a foundation of God and if you make the foundation of your marriage immorality and then you struggle by strength and you call pastor's name and you look for men of God no man of God can become a foundation for you and so what God is interested in tonight be, beloved I'm sorry you may not like me but I'm a prophet I'm speaking the truth may I not see tomorrow if I don't tell you the truth I was born for this reason God is more interested in you repairing the altar than you sowing seed God is more interested in you repairing when, 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 when Elijah repaired he was trying to tell God we are sorry and you see what, what happened the people came near they came near means they shifted ground they left the place of Ba they left the place of giving glory to what was not God they left the place of their foolishness and they came in union with the man who was sent for them and the man took responsibility he said God please spare my people please forgive my people he became an intercessor he repaired the altar he said God please let the one who offended you be forgiven he brought the people back to God and after that he slaughtered the animal of sacrifice and to make it dramatic he said pour water and the pot he said pour water which means in the days of God you can make shagara you can make shagara over demonic they say even in you for a altar they say they take your name to things they say no you make shagara say you say tell them let me suggest another altar they should go to maybe that one is not strong enough tell them to travel to Afikbo and add the God of Afikbo tell them to go to Ijabuere and, and covenant with that one as if if a, if a dark boy is not strong enough if a Quenyong is not strong enough let them go to Oshongo let them go to whatever it is you can make Nyanga when the altar has been repaired it takes God nothing to turn a barren into a fruitful vine it takes God nothing to heal diseases and sickness it takes God nothing to change a weakness into strength no it, change, it changes nothing in God to take an orphan and make the orphan a governor of a place God does not need to fast to heal you God does not need to pray to touch you in fact God doesn't even need prayer to do that when you have been repaired when you have been brought close and you are right with God before it happens God rebukes them for your sake these are the days of God this program is sponsored by the covenant friends and partners 
of Grace Family Global Outreach. You can be part of this Grace Revolution by becoming a covenant partner today. Allow God to use you. Our account details are as follows. Bank, Zenith Bank. Account name, Grace Family Global Outreach. Account number, 101 42 For inquiries, please call 081 804 323 or 090-738-38742. To all our covenant partners and friends, we we'll say thank you. Like the widow of Zarephath, your oil will never run dry. To order for the books, messages, and other resource materials, please call or send an SMS to 080-660-46346 or 081-804-33225. Videos are also available on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash Grace Family Outreach. To stay connected, like us on Facebook at Grace Family Outreach or visit our website at www.gracecommission.org